And today is finally the day we are checking out the brand new Corvette e -Rate. We are here in Los Angeles, California, seeing this in person, the first ever all-wheel drive CA Corvette, or Corvette in general. I am very in shock. Today, we're gonna be taking a real deep dive, finding out a lot of the engineering details of the new E-Ray, plus finding out what is also new with different design cues and options you can get. I do wanna ask when this thing will be available to get. Anyways, let's kickstart this video with a walk around and then transition to seeing the cutout mold of the vehicle. Now, as you guys all know, I took delivery of a Z07, Z06 not too long back. We're over 5,000 miles already. And seeing that car, the flat plane crank vehicle, just in the garage today, then coming out here, checking out an electric intensified Corvette, it's really shocking. And it does open so many new possibilities when it comes to performance and usability. Being all wheel drive, the team have talked about how they want customers to drive it in any condition. That is in snow or wet conditions, you name it. I'm very curious, given that it has the electric motor up front and all this extra power combined with the LT2, how does that translate to actual performance and sustained performance? Featuring 655 horsepower, just 15 less than a new Z06, with 595 pound-feet of torque. Numbers-wise, it's actually faster accelerating the 2.5 0 to 60 versus 2.6. The quarter mile is 10.5 seconds at 130 miles an hour. Still a little bit faster than the Z06. Having the wide body kit from the Corvette Z06, it does make it look massively different than the Stingray. Right away, the biggest differences I can tell from design, if I were to see one driving next to a Z06, you do have the body colored front fascia on the E-Ray. This is a brand new color for 2024. This gray is actually called Sea Wolf Gray, and then you have a new green as well, a number of new colors for 2024. Visually walking around the vehicle, as I said a number of times so far, you'll see a lot of design cues that are similar with both Halo versions of the Corvette so far. This is the brand new E-Ray badge. Come Coming close to it, it's got an all new blue that accents it very well. You can also get a new uh, tape stripe over the top that matches this blue, which is a special option for the E-Ray. One interesting point to touch is that this car has the widest, the biggest <laughs> all season Michelin tires. The dimensions are actually very similar to that of my Z06, the exact same, 345, 25 by 21. Very short sidewall, but with these new wheels, it looks aggressive. This contact patch will do a great job putting all that power down onto the ground. Plus, you have an upgrade for performance tires, which are the Pilot Sport 4S tires that are available also on the Z06. Customers might be able to put on all seasons on a Z06 or put the Cup 2s on this later on after market wise, but that's a whole different discussion point right there. I would say the biggest design cue that really differentiates the E-Ray with the Z06 is that having the LT2 engine out back, you do have the quad tipped exhaust, two on either side, similar to the Stingray does a great job accentuating the body lines of the vehicle. I'm curious to find out later on how it really sounds with the LT2 and the electric motor up front, how they, they combine the noise to give you an experience like no other Corvette before. Since we're with the Chevrolet team, let's talk with the performance manager for the E-Ray, that being Aaron Link. How you doing, man? Hey, Austin. Great, Great to, to be here you. again. It's been a while. We yes. actually, I talked with him, I think over a year ago with the Z06 launch here at the Peterson. Yeah, we love what you're doing with your car. Thank you're you so it much. Just as we would like you to take it and where, <laughs> where you're taking it. It's really awesome Not to see. Not in the garage. Not no. in the museum. Right, yeah, use it. <laughs> <laughs> the car's ready for it. Give her help. I've got questions about this vehicle, if you don't mind me asking. Firework. Looking at the E-Ray, given that it's got brand new technology to the Corvette brand, having the hybrid, what is it like when it comes to driving with the front tires and the back combined for performance? Do you see, do you feel a major difference? And also, is it sustainable for doing lapping or other types of tests? Sure. Yeah, we, we do have a difference here, and we wanted it to exemplify that. So we have a lot of all-wheel drive enthusiasts on our team, rally guys, things like that. And uh, that was a big part of the work we did on this car was the electronic all-wheel drive where, you know, it's a separate propulsion system from the rear. There's no prop shaft connecting the two. So to integrate the front axle with the rear such that you don't end up with 
a front wheel drive feel. We certainly don't want that. But you end up with this clawing, uh, all wheel drive kind of grinding, gritting feel out of a turn. Especially a low speed turn, you can really feel it come on. Um, however, we'd still maintain a real wheel drive attitude. Uh, steering with the throttle, kicking the tail out, drifting are all possible. Still has that bias on mm -hmm. the back end. So you would feel again the major difference on track, for example, with tight low speed corners because being slower in speed, having that power up front can launch you without spinning the back tires. Exactly. How is it implemented with the actual power band of the LT2? Is the EV motor kind of tuned down low or is it wide throughout the RPM to give you a gradual climb? Yeah, it's a good question, right? They have completely different characteristics of how they deliver their power. So uh, we've geared this fairly aggressively. It's an 8.16 to one gear ratio on the front. So it tends to come on quickly and take advantage of that instant torque on the motor. So I would say to answer your question, um, it would tend to shine at lower speeds best. Okay. Um, maybe an autocross or uh, tight U-turn, tight left turn, tight right turn, things like that, where you can commit to full pedal and we call it wide open propulsion now instead of wide open throttle uh, because you have both. To get back to your question on the lapping side of things, it certainly looks like it should do that, right? Yeah, it's got the same body. <laughs> and we've kind of instilled that as a Corvette characteristic for many, many, many years. So we didn't want to give that up. What I like about this car is it's got two different tires and both are um, able to be used on a track. The all seasons are more friendly for everyday life, obviously, and it's yeah. an all season car. You can upgrade to the PS4S that we have on the Z06, same exact tire, and then have a little more track capability or longevity. Um, the battery and motor systems are designed to either give kind of a qualifying session time where you, and you can, can choose that inside the car. You can choose that with a button and use uh, everything it's got in a, you know, a three mile lap, let's say or we can have a button push where it's going to sustain the amount of uh, power that you have in the battery to use for a long session. These cars will run 45 to 50 minutes on a tank of fuel. Could you get done, let's say, a, a 20 minute track session and still feel all the upgrades? You can, yes. So we've designed it, which is pretty trick in my opinion, um, of that usable state of charge of that battery there's a buffer at the very bottom of it that never lets you go below 20% roughly, really? such that it may not give you this um, boost out of a turn, but it's gonna maintain the handling balance for the whole session. We never let it dip below 20% such that you lose the front axle contribution, and then you're left with a different handling balance. And since the batteries, they're more located directly in the center tunnel, right? Right in the tunnel. Yeah. How does that affect with the weight distribution? Does that mean that the E-Ray has more of a neutral middle ground? It's very similar. So okay. Z06 is about 39% front. This is 40%, so really, really no difference. Architecturally, we always knew this was in the play for this, this model. Uh -huh. And so it was always accounted for with the sizing of the components. <laughs> How does it feel finally you're utilizing that center tunnel yeah. after all this time? Yeah, a lot it's of like, people oh, said, why do you need this giant tall thing? <laughs> well, you see now why, for one. But for two, it's a structural backbone. So you get that height of that section and it really gives rigidity. the torsional rigidity wow. to allow us to use the big springs on the Z06 where it doesn't become brittle and kind of... I got gotcha. feeling. It just feels very competent with those big springs. Basically, what I'm getting at it then is that it's track capable like the Z06, that's track capable, mm -hmm. but also the focus, in essence, this is a car that can be driven much more often with yes. all the, the widespread user friendly upgrades with yeah. all wheel drive. Is that the main target audience you would say for this vehicle? We've got a combination of the past and the future in this car. So the LT2 small block of uh, 60 years of 67 years of small block tradition um, within the Corvette such that that appeals to a lot of people that still know what this car is and what it represents and then we add in the front half of the car with the e all-wheel e drive that turns it into a performance hybrid. Our first foray into electrify, electrified Corvette, we can embrace the past, but then have the future added on. I would say the audience for this, it's somebody who recognizes the wider body that 
brings a little more aggression to it. The more tech. And the price point's a little higher, obviously. I like it because it appeals to traditionalists, I think, but then also people who want to just get a little taste of, boy, what could this be like? And I've got 160 extra horsepower, all the performance you think you need, but it's an all season car. We called it the Swiss Army knife oh, during, really? <laughs> during development. So it was supposed to be do everything well. You know, and the Z06 is a little more high strung, track focused, yeah. and kind of uh, the torch bearer for that side of Corvette. This is now the torch bearer for the future yeah. and not alienating people. You know, we hear a lot of customers say, don't make me plug this car in. You know, I don't want an electric car yet. So this is a way to try to get them comfortable with this. And it's a performance ad, right? 160 more horsepower, fastest Corvette ever. 125 seconds. more pound feet of torque. Definitely a lot more torque than the Z06. And like you were saying, you can feel that. Love the new badge, by the way, out back. Do you mind if we check out this cutout real quick? Absolutely. So given that this has the same wide body as a Z06, do you still have all the upgraded extra radiators and cooling functions? We do. Yeah, you'll see the center radiator that was added for the Z06. We maintain that in this car. And, and the brake cooling ducts are the same, right? Same as the Z06, yep. And then this actually has three added cooling circuits compared to the Z06 due to the battery and the power electronics needing cooling. How does it cool the electronics? Where is the So uh, this channel? is the new circuit. So there's a pump here and it runs up to the bottom of this um, heat exchanger here. The bottom quarter of it is reserved for the powertrain electronics and then those live at the front of the tunnel. Um, you can't really see it here. So it definitely is behind the, the frunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, we maintain the frunk in this car, which yeah. we're really proud and of. And this was a design cue from the beginning. You guys knew you had the space. It is. And wow. it's interesting to see the motor. It's pretty small, you know, and what it does for us, it, it's kind of a little engine that could almost. It blows your mind, right? Thinking about a could. big LT2 or even the LT6. Right. And then seeing how small these electric motors can be. Right. And how much power and torque you can get out of them. That's instantaneous yep. at all times. And then we have a uh, driveline, drive unit cooler there, that vertical piece that you wouldn't have on your Z06. Really? One. And you can see it mm -hmm. visually? Yeah. Oh, wow. Right there. Does this use the same oil as a Z06, a 50 weight? No, this uses the same oil as the Stingray. Do you need to put extra quarts of transmission fluid for track use on the E-Ray? No, no, this has the same um, uh, fluid, fluid capability as the Z06 that we added in for that model. Is this a new engine cover, by the way? I think I've been they seeing just painted this one. It for the show. <laughs> well, that's a pretty unique one. I think it works yeah, well with the sure. uh, the chassis all together. So here, Austin, is the other added coolant circuit. So this is for the battery cooling. It tucks in, you know, right around those covers that would normally be there. Does it have the same suspension essentially as the uh, Z06? This it's retune? closer to the Stingray Z51 okay. than the Z06. So more conventional spring rates. Um, and more traditional But like tuning. the helper springs? Nope. Okay. Nope. We don't need those on this because we keep the smaller, uh, lower rate springs. So Z06 kind of ventured off. And you know what's neat is we knew this car was always in the works. We took the Z06 a little more extreme than maybe yeah. in the past because we knew this was going to be a wide body, more traditionally tuned kind like a grand of tour kind car. Of. Mm -hmm. Can you feel the stiffness difference between both cars? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Given the same tire and everything, this car um, it hides its weight really well, you know, due to the battery motor, but it does have a little more of a traditional touring feel. And lastly, is there any way to see the batteries on the, the center? Side. Uh, other side, okay. So you guys thought of everything yeah, right here. Well done. What happens to these cutaways when you're, when you're done with them? They just go into the museum? Well, this the one is recycled from the Stingray, so... <laughs> really? <laughs> we'll use it again, I imagine. That's wild. So it's really compact. Are you using basically every inch inside? It is, yep. So yeah, this is fills up the tunnel. The power electronics kind of take up that front third of it. And then the rest is, it's 80 cells, four groups of 20 laid flat. Then 1.9 kilowatt hour? 1.9 kilowatt hour capability, yep. So physically looking at it, would that be the most amount that could fit in the center tunnel for now? It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's used every available inch. And, you know, you see the cooling pipes on top. Oh, really? So that's the cooling pipe? Those are in every 
C8. Really? So we knew that from the beginning. <laughs> Those would live there forever. That's and the wild. the going to fill in the bottom. And then for servicing, the dealers will be able to get access to that tunnel if they need to work on replacing yeah. Yeah. some batteries it's like really underneath. It's really pretty straightforward. You know, there's the structural um, plate that holds it all together, and it's really pretty easy to get to. So the whole design itself, it's not going to hinder too much on the experience of no. all this new tech. Can the dealer work on it? No. Yeah, okay. I think Corvette team... There's a lot of consideration always for consumer practicality, right? We don't want to have this exotic thing that people can't use or you have to treat differently. It's a very practical supercar or electrified supercar now. I have to ask, going to the track so much with my car, I'm curious, since this has the same body essentially as a Z06 track car, how close are lap times? Do you, have you tested them with the same, with the PS4s we obviously, have. with the upgrade? Yeah, with the PS4 compared to the Z06 with the same tire, you know, the FE6 package, they're very close to each other. So one's not being majorly gapped by the other. They no. can still lap. No, they do it in a different manner, right? This car different dig, driving digs style. hard out of, it, you do have to drive a little differently. Yeah, the all wheel drive tends to make you want to change how you enter a turn. And um, when you pick up the throttle, you know, making sure the arc uh, maintains the way you've yeah. intended it. And then one other question as well, I gotta ask. With the EV power, and you were talking about how you different driving modes to maximize how long it lasts, mm -hmm. is there a limit on how many launch controls you can do back to back? No mechanical or hardware limit, however long the battery lasts. So the longer you keep your foot into it, it's gonna go quicker, obviously. One thing with this is the performance hybrid. It decharges rather quickly, but it recharges extremely quickly. So everything that's charging it back up is, is the engine's charging it up, the regen mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and then her coasting as well kind mm -hmm. of recharges. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and we change it per mode. So track mode uh, has even more really? uh, regen drag to charge more quickly. And so it's moded. Uh, but yeah, there's no limitation. You can do as many as you want until the battery checks out and then you can recharge it in like a half mile of doing uh, Charge Plus. Awesome. Pretty amazing. Oh wow, look at this. Actually getting inside of the E-Ray. It's a very familiar place for me. <laughs> we have the level two carbon interior as well. Okay, so what are, you, what are you working on? So the startup graphics are different. You know, it highlights the battery. Uh, to do stealth mode, let's say, you change the rotary mode here, switch, and then it'll come up in normal. So if you push the start button right now, it would start the engine normally. If I go to stealth, and it's going to be quiet operation up to 45 miles per hour. So then foot on the brake, push start stop. You can hear some clicks going on. Batteries at 100% charge, state of charge, and very little fuel just for safety reasons. So if we go into drive, things start happening. We can't really do I much I can hear today, some noises right now, some ambient noises. It's rolling along. Really? And oh moving. my gosh. So it's silent propulsion <laughs> in the Corvette, first time in 70 years that it does this. It's so, more a shocking at first. What, what it is. It about? <laughs> so back to driving now, if I wanted to switch over to um, hybrid, performance hybrid mode, I would just switch the mode. Starting engine, stabilizing mission, synchronizing RPM. And then you'll see the familiar screen of whatever really? mode you've selected, and then it's normal driving. Wow, that is wild. <laughs> and the display, does it have, I heard it has new uh, modes to check out the EV powertrain. Yeah, let's do that. This is now one of the three pages that we offer. So if I flip the throttle, you can see the engine doing its thing. Electric output, doing this slow, it's probably not gonna do much. Yeah. <laughs> one horsepower, we okay. got out of it just crawling. <laughs> That's all it takes to roll. <laughs> but um, if we went to torque, you can kind of see the output there oh, yeah. of the fill we do just to roll along. If we go to dyno page, it's a live rolling counter of whatever you wanna pick, power, torque, and the time frame. So if I do a neutral blip, you can see the engine doing Oh, that is really cool. Head. And then the electric motor is on the top side. Will these new um, gauges find their way in other models in the future? I know the electric parts m might not for now, but like some of these power displays. Yeah, I think there's discussion of it, right? That'd be pretty cool. I would like and to see then it. <laughs> data, um, charge gain, charge use, fuel saved, e-all-wheel drive power, 
revolutions. So we have a 17,000 RPM limit on this motor. Wow. Which takes you to 150 miles per hour before it checks out. And then some temperatures as well. Major differences in the cabin is that you have the start and stop and then that special uh, battery saver mode, yeah. right? That keep plus, going. Yeah, two buttons here by your right knee. We've got an E-Ray badge on the steering wheel. And then one on the waterfall as well. Perfect. Hey, you know what? Thank you again for your time. Yeah, my pleasure, Austin. Yeah. Always fun. Always fun. Yeah, it's good to have you out here again. Excited to see you know the future with this thing and other variants as well. But yeah, really appreciate it. All right, here we are. Just left the building where they had the E-Ray. Really cool seeing it in person. Major thank you to everyone who had me out. A lot of cars doing like drive-bys, flybys right now. You can see the LA skyline actually right behind me. Anyways, I wanted to follow up with my final thoughts and impressions on the E-Ray. I want to keep everything real like I always do here on the channel, so I'm being honest. I, I'm not sure about the styling because when I look at it, I wish it had more of an identity other than looking just like the Z06 because when you consider it having the same wide body, the same size tires, you can get the same exact carbon wheels that my car has. Also, you get the same brakes. The car, physically, it looks just like the Z06, and you get the same exact downforce package as a standard non-Z07 Z06. So that begs the question, how will people know driving which one is which? And I think I asked that one. The team there, very cool people, always nice talking with them. Appreciate going out again. I'm just sharing my, my thoughts on the styling. I think it, it looks good, don't get me wrong. I, I love the styling, I have to. I, I have a car that has the same exact styling. Uh, my answer, the answer I got actually was that just look at the rear end, the exhaust will tell you whether it's the outer tipped exhaust or the center quad tipped exhaust. Also, there's a special stripe combination you can get for the E-Ray, which is a blue tape stripe. You see it right here. And not just that, you have the E-Ray badging. I love the technology in the car, the new displays. It's, it's nicely put together. I wish my car had the newer display in the middle with the gauge cluster. It's really cool to see. All right, we've talked about the design, right? The last other point I do want to mention, which I want to find out more about this in the future. Uh, the weight, so far that I know, uh, the dry weight is 3,775 pounds, and then the convertible is a bit more in the 3,800s. Dry weight is basically no fluid, uh, no cooling, no oil, nothing. It's empty. It's the lightest a vehicle can get. Technically, it's a correct measurement, though it's not the measurement that is applicable to us, I would say. Uh, usually when you buy a car, actually every car you buy, there's a huge difference between dry and curb weight. Uh, when I weighed my Z06 with a full tank, it came out to 3,660 pounds, a uh, curb weight with gas. Uh, dry weight, it was quoted at 3,450. That is about a 200 plus pound difference. I'm thinking the E-Ray is gonna be a 4,000 pound car. That is the heaviest Corvette ever. Though it's got all new tech, it's the first ever all wheel drive Corvette. Technically speaking, I would say the weight might help a lot with the all-wheel drive, putting down power when it comes to going in the snow elsewhere, more pressure pushing down that contact patch. For us performance enthusiasts, being 4,000 pounds, if you go on track or do some performance runs in a quarter mile, you gotta count yourself in the driver's seat. Let's say you weigh 150 pounds or 200 pounds. That's one person, add another person. Let's say you have two people who weigh 180 pounds each. You're looking at basically almost 4,400 pounds curb weight with two, two people in the car for a hot lap. That's a lot, that's as much as a, as a Dodge Demon. You get what I'm trying to say? It's an impressive car, I think it is impressive. I don't think it's purpose built for one thing. They're made to be widespread, affordable, and the chassis can fit tons of different variations. Every Corvette on the street has a tunnel brace down the middle that is housed and used specifically for the E-Ray Corvette or whatever they come out in the future. It makes sense. That's also why I think the weight is not super low in the Z06, since the chassis and the body has been designed to work with multiple variations of cars, it can't be like some of the exotic cars out there. Like Aaron said, they labeled it as a Swiss army knife in, in development, I believe. And it makes sense, it can do everything well. Don't get me wrong, a 4,000 pound car is capable but in my opinion, I would like to see much lighter cars in the future. We lower weight, everything is improved. And the reason why I'm saying everything is improved is because the car gets cheaper to own. You go through tires way less frequently. Um, you go through brakes slower. You eat up less fuel. Everything gets better. Your performance gets better. Your acceleration, cornering, you name it. 
the biggest thing though, and I'm gonna leave it off with this. What I have learned in the car industry with all, all brands is that it's easier, more straightforward to add performance and power. It's much more expensive to lower weight. And you have to consider the price point of the E-Ray. It's not the NSX price point of mid 100s to $200,000. Yeah, the NSX weighs less, more dedicated, more focused, but more expensive. This is a car that is affordable and what it offers you is unheard of that we've never really seen in the industry. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Share my honest feedback and opinions. I can say this because I own a Z06. I can say it. I wish the Z06 was lighter as well. That's my thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts as well. If you like the video, smash the like button, subscribe. I'll see all of you in the next episode.